Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to break down the main tactical themes in Belgium's narrow 1-0 win over Portugal. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, we have Belgium in a 3-4-2-1 and Portugal starting in a 4-3-3. So first we're going to break down how both sides look to contain each other and then we'll briefly focus on how they were able to create their narrow openings. So first we're going to start with Portugal due to the fact that they did encounter issues with this identical system against Germany where Robin Gosens was able to break forward down that left hand side and Germany were able to overload Nelson Semedo and it was Bernardo Silva who wasn't tracking back to close down the wing back. Here we saw an improved shape from Portugal and we saw different personnel. When you look to how they were looking to contain this Belgian side, it was Ronaldo sitting ahead of Vermeilen, but Bernardo Silva and Jota weren't initially stepping out into the path of Vertonghen and Alderweireld. They were allowing the center backs to push forward with the ball, and we did see Bernardo Silva doing a very good job of tracking the movement of Thorgan Hazard in that opening half. In the midfield zone, it was Moutinho and Renato Sanchez stepping towards Witzel and Tielemans to ensure that they couldn't dictate the game from deeper positions. And Kevin De Bruyne was dropping off deeper and Joao Palinha was doing a very good job of tracking his movement as well. Here you can see an example of Belgium looking to alternate their midfield trio positions with Kevin De Bruyne looking to get the ball in his own half but he's closed down by Renato Sanchez and you can witness Joao Palinha doing a job on Tielemans by closing him down tightly with Eden Hazard narrow ahead of Delo. Lukaku in between the center backs, and Thorgan Hazard looking to push forward beyond Bernardo Silva. If Portugal wanted to press high, you have Jota pushing to Alderweireld, Ronaldo near Vermeilen, Moutinho stepping into the path of Witzel dropping into his own third, and here you could see Renato Sanchez blocking off the passing lane into Tielemans, while Joao Polinha pushes forward near Kevin De Bruyne. What we ended up seeing up front was that Lukaku was occupying Pep and Ruben Diaz, and it was Eden Hazard who could drop off into that midfield zone to create overloads. Here you could see Alderweireld carrying the ball towards the halfway line. Line, and he's looking to split Moutinho and Renato Sanchez for Eden Hazard dropping off the low into a pocket of space. He ends up playing the ball into Hazard who drags out Joao Palinha. But now you have a 2v1 with De Bruyne and Tielemans just ahead of Jota and Rafael Guerrero. Hazard ends up playing a first time ball to De Bruyne who plays a first time ball to Tielemans. And now you can see Mounier making a run off or near Rafael Guerrero and Lukaku making a run between the center backs. However, unfortunately for Belgium, Tielemans' first time pass is over hit. But there were times where he was dropping off deeper to pull out Delo, and that was creating space for Lukaku to break into. Over on the right hand side, Mounier was being closed down by Jota, and that allowed Rafael Guerrero to track the movement of Kevin De Bruyne, who was looking to make runs in behind him, and he also received help from Joao Polinha when he was looking to make runs into that zone. So, as you can see from this approach, Portugal were fine with Vertonghen and Alderweireld pushing forward, and it was off and Alderweireld who was pushing into Portugal's half to carry the ball. As they were looking to deny the attacking midfielders and the deep-lying midfielders time on the ball and ensuring that Thorgan Hazard and Mounier couldn't have an impact out in those wider areas. At times due to the movement of Thorgan Hazard and Mounier, Portugal ended up dropping off into a 6-3-1. Here you could see Vertonghen carrying the ball into Portugal's half, and you end up seeing Thorgan Hazard and Mounier pegging back Jota and Bernardo Silva, with Eden Hazard dropping off into the midfield zone, and you witness Kevin De Bruyne and Tielemans on both sides of Joao Palinha. The other alternative that you saw from this Belgian shape was that at times it did look like a 3-1-4-2. You had Hazard shifting into a central position just playing off of Lukaku and then you would see Kevin De Bruyne and Tielemans pushing into pockets of space while Mounier and Thorgan Hazard were pushing high down the touchline. However, despite an improved Portugal performance here, what led to their downfall was that movement of Eden Hazard dragging out Delo, and we ended up seeing Thorgan Hazard run beyond Bernardo Silva in the build-up to Belgium's winner. Here you could see Vertonghen on the ball with no pressure applied towards him. And you have Thorgan Hazard pegging back Bernardo Silva. Eden Hazard dragging out Delo into the Belgian half. And that creates a gap for Lukaku who's running across Pep. However, when Vertonghen clips the ball into the left channel... 
Pep does a very good job of brushing off the Belgian striker. In the build-up to Belgium's winner, it's Vertonghen on the ball with Bernardo Silva looking to track back. And as you can see ahead of Vertonghen, you have Hazard dropping off into his own half just ahead of João Polinia. And you also see João Moutinho near Witzel. And that creates a passing lane for Vertonghen to clip the ball over Delo looking to step into the path of Dorgan Hazard, and Pep is caught out of position with Kevin De Bruyne in the halfway circle. Vertonghen bypasses the Portuguese press, and the ball falls into the path of Lukaku, who does a very good job of holding off Ruben Diaz, and he drags out Pep as well, as he creates time and space for his teammates to join the attack. While Belgium's initial attack doesn't result in a shot on goal, it's Mounier who squares the ball into the path of Dorgan Hazard joining the attack late, and it's Bernardo Silva who fails to track back to close down his marker, and it's Dorgan Hazard who puts Belgium ahead from this position. Meanwhile, when we shift to Belgium, out of possession they did a very good job of disrupting Portugal's attacking buildup. They dropped off into a 5-2-1-2 with Eden Hazard and Lukaku just ahead of Pep and Ruben Diaz, and then we had Kevin De Bruyne sitting on João Palinha. That ended up seeing Witzel and Tielemans pushing forward to Renato Sanchez and Moutinho. And then out in those wider areas, Bernardo Silva was occupied by Vertonghen and Thorgan Hazard. And Jota was in between Alderweireld and Mounier. There were times where Eden Hazard and Lukaku sagged off Ruben Diaz and Pep and were willing to shift out into those wider areas when the ball was shifted out to Delo and Rafael Guerrero. And that ended up seeing Belgium shift into a 5 4 1 with De Bruyne as the advanced player sitting on João Polinia. Over on the left hand side, you witness Eden Hazard tracking back to close down Delo with Witzel shifting across to close down Moutinho. And then you witness a 2v1 with Vertonghen and Thorgan Hazard near Bernardo Silva. If Belgium looked to push higher up the pitch, you'd have Eden Hazard and Lukaku stepping towards the center backs, and that's when you would see Thorgan Hazard or Mounier shifting towards Rafael Guerrero or Delo, depending on where the ball was situated. That leaves Belgium 4v3 at the back, as one Belgium wingback would step forward to the ball carrier, and the other one would hold. For instance, if the ball was shifted out to Rafael Guerrero, Mounier would step in towards his path, and you would see Thorgan Hazard sitting on Bernardo Silva with Eden Hazard shifting across into the path of Pep, but ready to push out to the low if the ball was switched into his path. In terms of a high press from the right-hand side, you have Lukaku ahead of Ruben Diaz, Mounier pushing high on Rafael Guerrero, and look at the Belgian attackers near him. Tielemans is pushing into the path of Moutinho, Kevin De Bruyne is tied on Joao Polinia, and you have Eden Hazard tucking in within close proximity of Pep. Ultimately, the biggest issue that Portugal encountered here was that there was a lack of service for Ronaldo. Out in the wider areas, they did a very good job of making up the numbers, whether it be Bernardo Silva being outnumbered, or Jota and Rafael Guerrero being closed down by Mounier, Alderweireld, and Tielemans shifting across. That forced Ronaldo to drop off deeper into that midfield zone to get on the ball. But even then, they had cover from the midfielders and the wide players dropping back. And the biggest issue that Portugal encountered with Ronaldo dropping off deeper was that there was no aerial threat in that penalty area to combat Vertonghen, Vermeilen, or Alderweireld. Similar to Belgium, the only way that Portugal could overcome this 5-2-1-2 was through the movement of Jota and Ronaldo. What you ended up seeing was that Jota was playing in a more central position, and he was dropping off into that midfield zone to drag out Alderweireld, and then that created a gap for Ronaldo to break into whether it be to the right or left of the center back. However, when Portugal looked to play those balls over the top for Ronaldo, he failed to get the better of the Belgian center back. This is an example of João Moutinho being closed down by Tielemans, with Mounier just ahead of Rafael Guerrero, and you could see Jota looking to drop off into the midfield zone and he drags out Alderweireld, and look at the lanes for Ronaldo to run across or just in behind Vermeilen. However, Tielemans does a very good job of getting tight on João Moutinho, and he forces the Portuguese midfielder to play the ball backwards. Once again, you witness what Jota's trying to do by pulling out Alderweireld. You have Mounier near Rafael Guerrero, but Tielemans is applying tight pressure on Renato Sanchez, and that's why the ball can't get played into Ronaldo, who's isolating Vermeilen. Here you can see João Moutinho dropping into his own half away from Witzel pressure, and he locates Jota making a run across Alderweireld, while Ronaldo occupies 
occupies Vermeiland and Vertonghen. When Moutinho clips that ball into the path of Jota, he does a very good job of nodding it down into the path of Ronaldo as Vertonghen also tracks the movement of Jota to provide cover for Vermeiland. However, luckily for Belgium, when the nod down falls to Ronaldo, his effort is blocked. In terms of the second half, we didn't see any drastic changes from Belgium. They did lack a counter-attacking threat with the departure of Kevin De Bruyne, and Dries Mertens failed to link play with Eden Hazard and Lukaku in transition. We still saw more of Eden Hazard looking to drop deeper to pull out Delo and retain possession, but besides that, this was about Portugal looking to gain an equalizer. In terms of how they look to do that, it was Ronaldo now dropping deeper into those channels to get on the ball, but similar to that opening half, he struggled to make an impact prior to one opportunity where he was able to link with Jota. If we look to an example, you could see Ronaldo carrying the ball beyond Thorgan Hazard and Tielemans, and he's approaching Eden Hazard and Vertonghen with Delo pushing forward in and around the Belgian box. Ronaldo splits Eden Hazard and Vertonghen and combines with Delo, and that's where you end up seeing Joao Felix making a run across Alderweireld to create space for Jota running across Mounier. Ronaldo locates that pass, and he plays the ball across Witzel into the path of Jota, who receives the ball in this position, and while he can't play the ball into Joao while Felish just in behind Alderweireld, he ends up quickly controlling the ball and flashing the snapshot inches over the net. What you ended up seeing from Fernando Santos was that he did make a change by bringing on Bruno Fernandes and Joao Felix, and it was Joao Felix who was able to combine with his teammates in that specific attack, and his willingness to get into the box, attempt to receive the ball between the lines, and link play across the penalty area did improve Portugal's attacking play. Besides that, we witnessed Portugal shift to a 4-1-3-2 following the introduction of Andre Silva, and that witnessed Renato Sanchez, Bruno Fernandes, and Joao Felix looking to push forward, while Joao Palinha did a very good job of protecting the back four. The last tactical shift that Portugal made witnessed them shift to a 3-2-5 following the introduction of Danilo Pereira, and he dropped off in between the center backs to provide cover, and that ended up seeing Sergio Oliveira and Bruno Fernandes protect the back three. Then they pushed Dalo forward down the right, and Rafael Guerrero and Joao Felix did interchange positions towards the left-hand side. But as you can see, both managers of effectively negated the opposing side's attacking threat, but it was Belgium's 5-2-1-2 that created more issues for Portugal that forced Fernando Santos into several tactical tweaks that ultimately didn't result in a goal. 